What is a miracle? Let me show you. A miracle is when you find a 14th century monastery on top of a mountain. Or when you find magnificent sand dunes at an elevation of 10,000 feet with a river flowing right through it. A miracle is when you reach Nubra Valley. Good morning, 8 a.m. Uh, Pangong is up and running. It's very busy right now. There are a lot of people who have stayed overnight are now packing up and leaving either to go to Leh or go to Nubra and so on. Uh, myself, I am going to be heading to Nubra through Tangste. That's the only fuel station on the way. Stayed overnight in Pangong. It was extremely cold. Uh, you will see there are a lot of these tents and huts which are there across like all the way up onto the valley you'll be able to see them and uh, it's good but the facilities are very basic so i would recommend you to be careful about how you plan and what you plan you can always do a day trip of pangong from leh so moving on from here we go to nubra stay there for a couple of nights explore nubra and then we see what do we do next so that's our cue to head back on the road. That's the thar, it's getting loaded for today. Found love in a hopeless place. You know why it's hopeless? Because of these roads. And you know where I found love? It's the 4x4 cruising at about 80 kilometers an hour. We are on the fourth gear. Nothing to worry. One very, very funny moment. We've just stopped on our way to Nubra. We just stopped somewhere in the middle. And uh, Vivek realized that he has forgotten his shoes back in Pangong. So bye bye to you. Finally reached Nubra. And now just checking into our hotel, staying at Shangri La Resort Nubra in the Hundar village. It's a little offbeat, quiet, peaceful location and area. The room seems to be nice. I'll show you around. You can see the view behind me. It's in the middle of the mountains and the forest. So it's quite pleasant. Network is there. So that's a good thing. And uh, now two nights chill over here. Day two in Nubra Valley. Arrived yesterday afternoon, evening-ish and then uh, just relaxed and chilled the entire evening just soaked in the nice weather it's pleasant it's not very hot it's not very cold so it's much better than the other places today we are going to have some fun we're going to go to the nubra valley sand dunes we're going to do some atv some camel riding some drone flying and we're going to go to the diskit monastery where you have the future, biggest statue of the future Buddha. So that's what we have in store today. That's what we're going to do. Uh, let's go. Belonging to the 14th century, this Kit Monastery is considered to be the largest and oldest monastery in Nubra Valley. You should visit this place to experience the serenity and the views it has to offer. Also known as Diskit Gompa, the monastery's most prominent attraction is the huge Maitri Buddha statue, which was inaugurated by His Highness Dalai Lama. Behind me is the right Maitri statue or the future Buddha statue. Standing at about 108 feet tall, this statue overlooks the entire town of Diskit. For adventure seekers, there is a little something. Uh, 
over here in Nubra Valley. One is of course the world's longest high altitude zip line. Apart from that you have the ATVs for sand dune bashing. For those who want to go around the entire circuit over the sand dunes and have some fun with the ATV. And then of course there is the other one where you have the camelback ride and stuff which is also pretty cool because they are the double humpback camels which are very unique. We'll see if we can make their on time before the sun sets. Hundar sand dunes. Uh, it's right in the middle of in the valley. So you have mountains on this side, you have mountains on that side, and then you have mountains behind me. And uh, you can do multiple things. You can dress up in their local costumes and pose. You can uh, do a camel ride, the double humpback camels, you can do archery, you can do ATV, too many options, we can choose your favorite and go for it, I'm not going to do anything, I'm just climbing up on one of the sand dunes, we're going to fly some drones and then we're going to head back. to Turtuk, which is the last village towards the northern part of Ladakh. I've heard it's a nice little valley and town and uh, also going to visit the last village of India, Thang, from where we'll be able to see the border. It says you are under enemy observation 200 meters ahead is the viewing point. So let's go and see a neighboring country. Now there is this, this kind of a nervous feeling when everything is so quiet and so uh, conflicting in terms of two countries who have been at war for so long. And uh, you know, you get to reach a point from where you can see uh, both the countries, it's astonishing. Two kilometers away from Pakistan occupied Union territory of Ladakh. Okay, so we have reached Thang village, which is the last accessible village uh, for Indians before the Pakistan border starts. Behind me, you will be able to see Pakistan. Frankly speaking, I was expecting it to be a little more intense in terms of feeling, but it's just another tourist spot. While you can see black bunkers of Pakistan and you can see the roads, it's kind of a very average feeling if you ask me. Uh, right behind these trees on the far, you can see uh, the Greenland, that's Pakistan. Um, sad story, but true story. Back in 1971, there were two villages which are supposed to be uh, like twin villages of uh, Farnu and Thang. And then overnight, LOC came into existence. Villages got separated, families got separated, uh, husbands got separated from wives, children got separated from parents. And uh, even today, it, they say that there are some relatives who live on this side in Thang, which is in India and some who live on that side in Farno, which is in Pakistan. That's uh, the scene here from the village of Thang. 
last accessible village now we're going to head to turtuk and explore a little bit of turtuk hopefully and grab some lunch and then head back to nuka As I turn the pages of this new chapter in the dark, remember that the story is much about the land as it is about my own transformation. I've set out a big task today. The idea is to reach Ansgar. Stuck for about almost one and a half hour. It's becoming very challenging to reach Madhu. Stuck for about two hours now. Still struggling. still the flow is so strong